When President Biden signed legislation to ban the social media app TikTok in the uh, United States if its Chinese owners do not divest from the company, that signaled that data security has moved to the forefront of the continued economic rivalry that's taking place between the United States and China. And of course, as all of our modern devices continue to gain the ability to both generate and transmit data, industry experts predict that TikTok is going to emerge as just one of many Chinese-controlled companies that lawmakers are going to target. Well, joining me now with his thoughts on all of this is Gordon Chang, a distinguished senior fellow at the Gatestone Institute. He's the author of China is Going to War and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. And as just a way of reminder, and I encourage you to follow him at on X, former Twitter, under the handle at Gordon G. Chang. Uh, this is one that you definitely want to follow if this is a topic of interest, which it should be. Gordon, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to have you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jody. All right. So this whole topic of data security, why is this such a major concern? Well, China is vacuuming up who, uh, of uh, data from around the world, not just the United States. And it's using it uh, for various purposes. One of them, of course, you know, is just economic. And, uh, but the most important thing, though, it is using it against the United States. It is getting information in which to blackmail Americans. It does that through TikTok. Remember, TikTok is on 170, devices, 170 million devices which means that Beijing is getting information about more than half the American public on just one platform. And as you point out, there's more than just TikTok. But it's using this um, in a way that is targeting the United States, and we just can't permit that. This is more than just economics. This really is, goes to national security. OK, we've got a proposal for what's being called the clean network designed to prevent Beijing from accessing the personal uh, data of Americans. What's your take on how the Biden administration has been handling all of this? Well, the Biden administration knows of the problem, and every once in a while it does something about it, but really it doesn't have its heart in it, um, because we need to show the same determination in protecting our data as the Chinese uh, show in stealing it. Um, we have known for a very long time that China, for instance, uses TikTok. They violated every pledge that they've made to the United States on data security. They violated U.S. laws by stealing data. And, you know, the president's response has been to put his campaign for re-election on TikTok. He did that memorably during the Super Bowl this year. So it shows you a lack of seriousness on the part of the administration. And while I'm glad that he did sign the TikTok bill last month, the point here, though, is that he extended the deadline for the sale of TikTok until after the November 5 election. So that shows you what Biden is thinking. Wow. that's I had I'd forgotten that on the Super Bowl. That's a, a good thing to remember. You know, there's a lot of commentators out there that somehow are trying to paint a story of equivalence between China and the United States when it comes to the citizens' data, but are they really comparing apples with oranges here? Yeah, there is no comparison. You got to remember, we're a very different society than China. Um, China is a communist state. It's top down. No Chinese individual, no Chinese entity can disobey an order from the Communist Party. So when ByteDance, for instance, the Chinese owner of TikTok, says, well, it would never provide data to the Communist Party. Well, it has no choice but to do that. Um, you know, in our country, uh, big tech platforms, yeah, they collect data like TikTok does. But uh, if they want to, and they often do, they resist uh, requests from the federal government about supplying data. So we're a very different society. And I don't think that there is any equivalence here. Yeah, great point. You you brought up ByteDance, the, the company that owns TikTok. And, you know, it, it was interesting to me that they have said that they would prefer to shut down U.S. operations instead of selling. I think that tells us everything we need to know about all of this. Uh, before I let you go, our time is about to run out. Before I let you go, there's one more item I wanted to get your insight on. China has said that they they will respond to the U.S.'s recent military aid to Taiwan. 
What in the world do you think that could possibly mean for the U.S.? Well, they're going to huff and puff about Taiwan. Um, you know, they're going to send their planes across the median line in the Taiwan Strait, which is the boundary. They'll send their ships close to Taiwan. But what we really need to keep our eye on is what they're doing at Second Thomas Shoal and Scarborough Shoal in the Philippines, in the South China Sea, because there they're engaging in really belligerent activities, some of which constitute acts of war. And they're doing that in defiance of America's warnings that we are prepared to use force against China to discharge our obligations pursuant to our mutual defense treaty with the Philippines. That's the really the great flashpoint right now. And that's what I think China means when it says it's going to impose costs on us. Do you think this is going to lead, and we only have a, a less than a minute, do you think this is going to lead to a military conflict? I think so, um, because we have to ask a question. And that is, whenever has a militant state with expansive territorial ambitions engaged in fast military buildup and not gone to war? Well, it's disturbing when you look at what's happening really all across the world right now. I mean, we, not the least of which is our own southern border, but then you have what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. And then what's happening now yeah, with China and Taiwan, it really is a very disturbing situation. Thank you, Gordon Chang. It's to always fantastic to speak with you and get your insight. We appreciate it very much. Well, thank you so much, Jody.